gonna work on our arms and our legs. Okay. All right, so let's sit down on our butt. This is our movement right here. Okay, so we're at a seven flat right now. Okay. Let's go to six five, a little faster. Focus just on your arms. Let's go to a six flat. This is right where you're at right now. We have to break through this wall. Let's go to five nine. That's what you want, that's your goal. But I see better. Let's go to five eight. Fast, fast, Rich. Fast, think fast. You see that? His butt is coming off the ground. That's fast. And that's efficient right there. That's Brandon Marshall of the New York Jets, who was kind enough to work me out on Monday at Pepperdine University. And uh, for the radio audience, we're going to post the videos of that and run them tomorrow on Thursday's edition of The Rich Eisen Show. Joining me here is another man who has been whispering advice to me for years. And, uh, and I'm thrilled to have him right here on The Rich Eisen right. Show, multi-platinum recording artist back here again, Snoop Dogg. Good to see you, Snoop. Hey, Richie Rich, it's my pleasure, baby. How are you? I'm all hood, I can't complain. Now look, you said to me last year, you, uh, this, is, I'm in the, uh, this is great last year, I'll explain it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing the combine with Mayock, I'm on the air, look down at my phone, and it's a text from Willie McGinnis saying Snoop wants to talk to you. He's in town. I'm like, okay. And you wanted me to run in your shoes last yeah, year. Yeah, because they was made for you. They was made to cut a little time off because I took a little weight and, you know, moved it around so mm -hmm. that way your feet and your speed and your feet was all going to be on the right time. You was going to get about five, seven last uh, year. I know. And I, I was already locked into another yeah, yeah, yeah. shoe. Yeah, we ain't, man. No, I know that. And But you understood the business. You're a businessman. <laughs> Just like you. Okay. So now, this year, though, mm -hmm. different story. Yes, sir. Where you are going to... I'm going to give you... Bestow me the shoes. Some shoes that are so fire and so hot. Mm -hmm. I predict you to run a 5.6 in these. 5.6? Five, 5.6. Six. Five, six. In these shoes. Yeah, with the training you just got from Brandon, Brandon gave you the key. The key was mm -hmm. here, 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 and then let your mind be free. Because what I noticed about your running, yes. you're so stuck on form. You, you, <laughs> you're trying to be form. Let the form go, Rich, and just run. Well, the problem I've always had, Snoop, now that we're just going to get into it here, is getting off the line. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what I was doing with my hands and feet there. Brandon Marshall gave me some great tips. The, hands way, down. You, the way to hold your hands is key as well. Right, he told me how to hold my hands, where to put my feet, head down, mm -hmm. and we were running the tens. Yeah, because th that's the most important. Last year was the first time my 10 was electronically timed, Snoop, and it, uh, it was so bad that I couldn't even tell my own children the time, okay? Mm. But I will, I'll, I'll, I'll share it here, it was over two six. That's too long. Well, here's the thing that I thought, though, is like if it was over 2.6 and I ran a 6.1, that means I'm running the last 30 in three and a half seconds. Yeah, you speedy, so you got to get that takeoff right. Which Brandon helped me on. I got it, it under two seconds before. Love I love it. But I, I, love it. But I wasn't running in the suit. And you suit. have to have a bow tie on. Now, you can't tell me. Because <laughs> <laughs> the other tie keep floating in the wind and it's slowing you down. The yeah, bow tie going to be just right there, just like <laughs> absorbing all that speed. Just wah, 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 wah. Well, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, I know, you keep telling me, and you also tell me to button up the jacket. You have to. But that's too restrictive. I can't do that either. It's flavor, too, Rich. You got to run with style, man. It's just, it's like you're not running with style. You're too into the form. Let the form go and get style about it. The style going to bring the time. Well, down. Brandon was telling me chin to pocket with yes. my hands. Yes, Chin to pocket. Yes. But yes. the problem was, is I was I was doing forehead to pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he was way up here. <laughs> break it down, break it down, break it down. There you go. Okay, so you have the shoes. We we want to yeah, get I that one out of the way. Okay, you, well, there we go. What do we have here? They hot like fire too. Look here, let me get them out there for you. Look you got, what they look like. Oh my gosh! Now feel, the, feel how much shoes. they weigh though. Oh yeah. This hardly weighs anything. It weighs about the same as this. Which is the insole. Exactly. Okay. So these are the shoes you, I will be wearing. Mm -hmm. These are the Adidas shoes. Fire. That have fire from head to toe. And this is what the guys are going to be wearing yeah. this year. Yes, sir. So these are what the kids who, are, who wear the Adidas shoes of the combine are going to be They're wearing. They're going to be rocking year. the same and thing. And this is what rock. I have. Exactly. Okay. Teammates. No pressure. No. What do you think? Seriously. 5.6. Wow. Point three. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know how to even handle all that. All right, Snoop Dogg giving me the shoes right here yes, that sir. I will be wearing, and you say five six. Yeah, five six three. And again, these they're, they're it's it's a smoking flame from toe to heel. Yes, make sure you have on dress socks. 
Well, yeah, dress socks, you yes. know, like my suit socks. Yeah. Yes, exactly. There you go. I'll be doing that. Snoop Dogg here on The Rich Eisen Show. All right, I'll leave these on the desk for the moment. You are also dressed head to toe in Steeler gear. Yes, sir. What would you think of the Super Bowl? Because last time we saw you was the Friday before it, the day after you blew it up for this show at yeah. the media availability. Uh, what would you think of the Super Bowl this year? Defense Super. wins championships. That's always been, you know, the code from day one as far as football is concerned, and it was proven in the Super Bowl. Great offense, but the defense from the Broncos was just immaculate. Mm -hmm. The front four, the DBs, the linebackers, everybody was on point, and they made it easy on Peyton. That's why they won it. Because Von Miller was... A beast. Unbelievable. I believe he had a lot of built-up frustration from not playing in that Seattle Super Bowl because he didn't play in that game. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that was a lot of built-up anxiety. And he was in control. He wasn't out there wild. He was in control. He played like a, a kid on a, on a little league football team just having fun. And he did it against Brady the week, the two weeks before, too. So he figured that if he could mm -hmm. stop the top, right. you know, it would be easy to get Cam. Right. Which we didn't think because we know how athletic Cam was. But at the same time, do you know how athletic... Von Miller is. He's unbelievable. Boy. Now, interesting. Hey, Brockman, you, why don't you read for Snoop the uh, comparison to Von Miller that we heard today at one of the weigh-ins at, at the Combine. Derrick Henry uh, measured today at 6'2 and a half, 247 pounds. Heisman Trophy winner, Derrick In Derek 2011, Henry. Von Miller was 6'3, 246 pounds. Think about that. Derrick Henry is Von Miller's size coming downhill right now. Everybody that sees Von Miller for the first time thinks he's a running back or an offensive player. Mm -hmm. He's not built like a defensive player. He's, it's unbelievable. And Derrick Henry, too, is, is a, a monster right big there. monster dude. Yeah. If he's sitting there late first round, you want your Steelers on him? Or what do you think? Man. How about that for a question? Why not? He reminds me of the bus with a little more uh, traction under it. Now, I know Le'Veon Bell is, is the guy, but, we, but, we've, but we've seen the last couple of years that you and it's no fault a, of his. You've got to have a great backup because you never know injuries. You never know what happens. This is football, and, and Le'Veon plays hard. Mm -hmm. He plays a receiver role. He plays a running back role, blocking role. He does everything that we ask for. So at times he could, you know, feel like he needs a great backup. D'Angelo Williams was awesome this year, too. He was terrific. He was absolutely yeah, terrific. Was. And then, you know, Fitz Toussaint got, got, uh, got it done up until, obviously, that, that awful fumble oh. that happened in the playoffs. Don't mean to bring up the, the negative. I, I forgive you, Fitz, even though I went bad on you on Instagram. I, I, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> now, walk me through this process. Do you, you know, where you grab the Instagram? It's just a natural reaction, Rich. Like, I'm a diehard fan, and when I feel like I have to vent, that's my way of venting. That's my television show. That's my Rich Eisen show, to vent <laughs> to the whole NFL that this is the way I feel. But when they do good, I give them their props. Yes, you do. I ride them out. But as a, as a diehard fan, I feel like Joe Namath says, if I'm a fan, it's, I have the right mm -hmm. to critique. I have the right to speak my mind because I'm a fan. I'm invested in you guys just like you invested in the team. So who do you think the Steelers need when you're going to be watching the Combine this weekend, seeing these guys work out? Um, who do you think your, your Pittsburgh Steelers need to, to keep chugging think, forward and we need forward. one of those lockdown dbs we need one because if we had that lockdown db since troy palomalo left the defense has really shifted around mm -hmm. so i feel like we need that lockdown db or either that safety that can become that safety that reads the field and does what safeties do to make sure the defense is neutralized so you want somebody for the back, the back end of that end. defense we need the back end front end is cool well they always seem to go best available player all the time True. And the, neat, and the crazy thing about the Steelers, too, is because I have my draft cards for the draft every year, okay? And the NFL Network hands me these draft cards that uh, has all of the draft choices and selections mm -hmm. that are available for each team. And usually it's like team has one and then a three and then four fours and then nothing till the seventh <laughs> round. The Steelers every year, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's, they the, don't, it's the Roney rule. They don't trade draft picks. <laughs> they don't trade up. They don't trade back. Usually, it's just, it's the formula. that's it. It's the formula that's been set for many years, and it works. You know, we bring in players that sometimes you feel like, well, why did they get him? And then he, t he pans out to be a great Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. It's all about the ethic, the, the, the Steel City makes you work. So when you get there, even if you're not a hard worker, you're mm -hmm. going to work hard. And if you are a hard worker, it only complements what you do. And then, I don't know, I, I, I'm not familiar with the tight end class right now, um, but Heath Miller, mm -hmm. uh, Heath Miller retired. What are he your did. thoughts on Heath, Heath Miller's Heath retirement? Heath has been a great 
addition for us. He's always had hands, great blocker. He was always there for us. I wished him luck on his uh, retirement. But I like Jesse James. The outlaw, yeah. Jesse James is Penn called. State. I like him. He's special. So you wouldn't mind? I like Jesse. He stays put in that state. Is Jesse, what baby. Okay. He's well, he, the outlaw. He, he was a. He was a. He left a year early out of Penn State last year. That he was on the Steelers. He had. A, he had a couple of good games. Mm -hmm. But he's going to be a solid, solid pro. Once they give him more time, I feel like he'll fill the role. And he's a little bit bigger too. Okay. So you like him? Right? They drafted him last year, I and like you like Jesse. him staying put right Jesse, there in the two in, J's, in Pittsburgh. Baby. I like. Uh, and before we take our first break, and we come back in 60 ticks of the clock, we'll talk a little bit more. We're here with Snoop Dogg. Uh, I had a listener yesterday call in saying, "What happened to your Raider fandom? Why, why are you not rooting for the Raiders as openly as you used to?" when they maybe were here in Los Angeles, and uh, you're now Pit you're Pittsburgh head to toe. Well, I've always been a Steeler fan, and right. I, I had a love for the Raiders when they was out here because they were here, and you know, you're in our neighborhood, so we become fans of what you guys do. But they ain't won in so long, it's hard to like them. <laughs> 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 you're right. They are a fan. Yeah. You are a fan of them. So, so does that mean you're going to be interested in the Rams now a little bit I'm more? I'm going to support any football team that comes to Los Angeles because I'm a Los Angeles native, and I'm definitely going to support the Rams. But if it's... Until they play the Steelers. That's, and then that's it. And it's over. Then you tap out. Point blank. Okay. Uh, Snoop Dogg is here on the Rich Eisen Show. He has handed me these new beautiful Adidas Shh. shoes that are filled with fire. Yes. Hot. Figuratively and literally. You see the smoke coming off of them? They hot. They are hot. <laughs> We're back with more with Snoop in 60 Ticks. Drop it like it's hot. We're going digital, virtual. Is it virtual? It's, 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 oh. high, it's high technology. This is high tech scouting stuff right here. I want you to put this GoPro on your head. Okay. We'll break down the film later. Okay, so feet, get up and visualize. I'm visualizing. Here you go, that's a bigger, that's a healthy step. That feel great? Yeah, I think so. Head yep. down. Head down. Right, right hook foot hand there. Left on the butt. That's it, Rich. Cool. Oh my gosh, so much better. That's good. Yes, yes. Awesome, Rich. That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. That's good. I mean, we can't get... Cut! It's a wrap. Great That's job, Brandon Brandy. Marshall. Great job, Brandon. And I wasn't and I, I wasn't even in the Fire 40s. Oh, you, did you see the shoes yeah, I was wearing? Yeah, you had the Snoop Dogs from last year. From last year. Rocking and rolling, baby. Well, that, like, that, you had like a, what, like a Jaguar on yeah, it or something? Yeah, like like it, it was uh, uh, unleashed the, 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 the beast. So it was like mm -hmm. we had lions and bears and mm -hmm. all those kind Snoop of wild Snoop Lion, I like yeah. yeah. Yeah, those wild animals. All right, Snoop Dogg here on, on the Rich Eisen Show. What do you think of uh, the Cam post game? Super Bowl press conference and then the conversation that the national media had after. I'm a sore loser too, so <laughs> I'm just gonna tell it like it is. What I think it was, remember it was a voice that you could hear in the back? That was Chris Harris. Mm -hmm. That just was like a smack in the face, you know what I'm saying? Like he up there, yeah, you know, we, we did what we were supposed to do. We all, man, I'm out of here. I'm gone, man. Right. I did, because if he doesn't leave, he's gonna say something detrimental that can hurt him. And sometimes the walk away is better than saying something that could hurt you. But you've got kids that you counsel, True. right? You've True. got kids, True. and congratulations, by the way, Man. on getting a, a, Snooper Bowl yes. ring, a Super Bowl ring for a Snooper Bowl yes. guy in Ronnie Hillman. Hello. First one of many, hopefully, for, mm -hmm. for you and your youth league. But what, what do you, you know, is there, is there a lesson to tell your kids in this in the, any way, shape, or form The lesson is here? to always be kind and be a sportsman at all times. Mm -hmm. I, what I did like is that he went to Peyton Mm -hmm. At the end of the game, with all smiles, congratulating Peyton, letting Peyton know, hey, man, great game, congratulations. Okay. To me, that was the most important piece right there. Because I've seen guys lose and don't shake hands with their opponents. Now, that's unexcusable. Media, uh, well, sometimes the media get on your nerves. And to me, it's not excusable, but at the same time, I kind of sympathize with him because I'm a sore loser. But I would tell my kids in that position, hey, Suck it up, do your interviews, like Marshawn Lynch. Do what they ask. I'm only here to do these interviews and mm -hmm. roll out. Mm -hmm. And just, so, do you think there, this was a learnable moment for Cam at all, or definitely, not really? Definitely, You do? He learned a lot from this. Cam is smart. And he'll be back. This is not his well, last no Look, there's no doubt about that. What was his what was his measurables at the combine, Brockman? You, had, you said that in the first segment of the show. Cam Newton was 6'5", 248. Think about this. He'll be back. And, and that doesn't even give a description of who he is until you stand next to him. Like, that's not telling what it is. You have to stand next to this man 
and see how big mm -hmm. he is and how smooth and how sharp he is at his position. Snoop Dogg here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, Washington, uh, the uh, team president of, of, the, of the Skins, um, came out and said um, that Bruce Allen came out, basically said finally what we all assumed, that RG3 is going to hit the street. Um, what, what, what do you think of RG3's future in this league, Snoop? I think once he finds the right team that can put him in a system that fits his abilities, he's going to be just fine. Redskins couldn't handle him. They didn't know what to do with him. He fit more of a Chip Kelly style of offense. And I feel like if he finds the right team or the right team finds him, he'll be just fine. Which he's team do you think? Just ponder that, noodle uh, that for a second. I mean, do, first of all, if you are in charge of a team, Snoop, you're mm -hmm. a, would, you, would you bring him on and start him? Like, just put him out there and be the starter? I would make him team. work. I would make him work because I feel like he's that kind of kid that wants to work, and he doesn't want to be given anything. And if you give him the position to work at, if he gets great and gets to the point to where he can be great again, right. I think he's going to shine. So the Cowboys wouldn't start him, but they might have a spot for him backing up Romo. You think so? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, I do. You think so? I do. Oh, because he is from Texas. He's there. Baylor. He's from Baylor. Yeah. He's, and, and, and he's mobile. I mean, did, didn't his parents wear an RG3 Dallas Cowboys sure did. jersey when he was there? When the Redskins played the Cowboys. Oh, they did? They did. Mm. They're and, putting and it out there. And you know, Jerry, Jerry's a monster behind that kind of move well, right there, look, too. I mean, Romo, Romo is, in my mind, I still believe he is a healthy Super Bowl potential quarterback. There's mm -hmm. no question about mm -hmm. it. I also got a chance to spend time with him at the Super Bowl this year at an event uh, for Courtyard with him and, um, and Steve Young. I emceed a, a, um, a chalk talk with them. Mm -hmm. And his mental approach to the game and knowledge of the game and the playbook and the film study was off the charts. But you have to have I mean, a team to complement that. When they got rid of that running back, oh, man. worst move ever. Worst move ever. Leading the league in rushing with the outstanding line, you was one play away with the catch that wasn't the catch. Right. And then you get rid of DeMarco. I don't understand that point. I didn't either. But I guess, I don't know. You're right. Marshall Falk said that on game day morning when everyone's like, what's the matter with the Dallas Cowboys this year? And he it's basically that. said, that was it. He said that was the moment you couldn't he even come back Tony from it. He made Tony better because Tony could give him the ball and you have to respect the run game. We don't even respect the run game in Dallas no more. No disrespect to the running backs there, but it's a difference when you got that man running downhill. Well, it also would have helped to have a, a backup quarterback who could win a football game. And that's oh, wow. why I'm saying that RG3 there. It makes if, sense. If, just if he could stay there and sit there, Mm -hmm. And be content mm -hmm. for till Romo is done there, <laughs> whenever that might be. Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm just going in my head right now. Where else there might be a spot for RG3 to go ahead and start? Um, would Cleveland be a spot? Because I know we've been here. Problems. We've been here. We've been here talking about how Cleveland. There's people. Go get Osweiler. Go get Osweiler and use your number two overall selection on a beast like Joey Bosa or any of these Man, beasts that we not see here. Let him go. That's what I said. So, mate, what about Cleveland? Q Jackson going to get RG3? Uh, they in he our can... division. He's going to have problems. What about the, <laughs> what about the Rams? <laughs> what about Les Snead pulling the, the Rams? miracle of all trades? You want to get somebody at, you, because he, where he traded away yeah. the pick for him, now they get him for nothing. Oh, wow. So it comes back to Fisher. Maybe. Str strategic, it, strategically, it sounds good. I know they liked him. And they liked him a lot. It just was just an absurd amount of, yeah, of, at that of time. first round choices. You can't turn that down. At that time. But may, hey, time prevails. He, he, may, he may fit right now. Yeah. I wish him luck, though. RG is a friend of mine. So wherever he finds himself playing, mm -hmm. I love you, RG. Get your mind back right and get your feet up under you. All right. So what do you think about the Steelers' prospects? I know you think they're still Super Bowl ready, yeah. but. We got the best offense in the league when everybody's healthy. So you're a Todd Haley guy? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, that old Todd, Instagram Todd, account. You know what it is, Todd. Come on now. There's that old Instagram account. Yeah, me, me and Todd, we, we agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. He got it together at the end of the season, though. Hey, look, you cannot. This offense is it's, on tilt. It's on tilt. There's, I like it's Martavius. I like Antonio. I it's like. Come if on, Bell man. stays healthy for 16 games, it's, it's frightening. Wrap. And we didn't have Marquise Pouncey. See, that's what people are failing to realize. That center mm. is the key. 
Every great Super Bowl quarterback has to have that center to communicate with him. Whenever we won a Super Bowl, we had a great center. And whenever we don't make it to the playoffs or go as far as we go, it has something to do with that center. Oh, man, I just love talking football with you. How are you enjoying Turfed Up, that show I'm that you did? I'm loving it, man. What? I'm loving it. We're going to come back for our second season. On YouTube, right? People yes, can find it out there on YouTube. Yes, sir. Where you were asking the questions. Yeah, I was, I was in your shot. Yeah. You know, doing what you did. And I was in your <laughs> yeah, seat exactly. on your show. Exactly. And it's you, a good thing. Yeah, it was fun. You had, well, you had, you had T.O., you had Willie McGinnis. Yeah, uh, Gonzalez. I had some basketball players, and, you know, Martavius Bryant, Michael Rappaport. Yeah. I missed that one with you and Rappaport. Oh, Rapp is a fool. That must have been something. I love him. How'd you like the All-Star game, the NBA All-Star game in Toronto? I saw you up there. I thought it, I thought that Toronto did an excellent job of hosting the mm -hmm. NBA All-Star week. They actually moved up in my book because it was so beautiful. Even though the weather was cold, but it the was. events were so nice. They were well put together. The people were, were very hospitable. It was, it was, it was great. Yeah. And what'd you think? Do the, uh, do the Warriors get the 72 wins? I think they get 75, by the way. That's my opinion. Do you think the Warriors make the They got 17 Bulls? games at home that they're going to win. Right. So whatever their record is now, plus 17. So that's 67 and 5. And if they play the Lakers anymore, give, give them some wins on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because we went through all of this. They played the Spurs five, twice five, in San Antonio. Five games with the Spurs and Clippers total. Yeah. So that's a Two of them in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. They've got one in OKC left. We don't know where they're staying uh, overnight. Well, they're there. <laughs> um, I like them, though, man. They, they, I, like they, I like their mentality as far as how they play for each other and they play to have fun. That's okay. what the sport is meant to do. It's meant to be played with each other and, mm -hmm. and to have fun. And before we, before we let you go, um, although do you, have, do you have time for one more second? Yes, sir. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have Snoop. He's given me advice on my 40. He's going to give Chris Law advice on that 40 that's right there in front of him. Can he, can he guzzle it in 20 seconds? He wants, actually, it's 12. 12. 12. Oh, wow. Two, two of Rich's 40s. In the hood, it's 20 seconds. If you do 12, <laughs> you may be Guinness book, baby. Call him now. Kevin, call Guinness. One last segment with Snoop here on The Rich Eisen Show before Matt Stafford joins us. Oh. Al Davis just dropped Look at the him. Get it. Hit it. Get 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 it. Radio audience, oh, wow. you just uh, heard that what happened guy. moments ago that our television audience saw Cardiki of AT&T, what is that, was marketing, I think it was? We'll go yeah, with Snoop. Get him some pants, Snoop, he, he split he, his pants. He split his pants yeah. and he fell, <laughs> he <laughs> fell <laughs> face first across the, he slid across the 40 he line. He did that. Now, in baseball, that would have been a hell of a play. <laughs> <laughs> He's in business analytics business here analytics. at AT&T. And right. we're proud of our business analytics department here yeah. at AT&T. It's all for a great cause. That's what I love. Yeah, it is. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And I just want to say that now I'm about to start donating to the St. Jude Hospital. When I started watching, I found out what it was about, and I definitely want to be a part of it. I told my team to reach out to them. Oh, that's I awesome, Snoop. Let, uh, let, me, let me help in that please, process, please. Please, Because, again, it's, uh, it, for people who don't know, it's a spot. It's heaven on earth. Kids get sick. Families don't know what to do. They reach out to St. Jude. St. Jude says, come to, come to see us in our campus. And families fly out there, and what St. Jude makes sure is the kids get well, and that the parents just focus on the kids. They don't see a bill, love but it. but it's all donation supported. I love so it. that's why we've got to raise as much money as possible. Adidas is kicking in, yeah. uh, not only the shoes but some money towards St. Jude's, which I'm thrilled about. Uh, Courtyard, Direct TV, NFL Network, and you can go to NFL.com/slash/RunRichRun, upload your 40 video. Please stay on your feet if you can, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and and donate uh, here on the show. Um, and later on, there will be a competition here as well, Snoop, before I let you go. Uh, Chris Law at the Chris Command Center, who you've known in your many appearances here on the show, says that he can uh, down a 40 ounce in the amount of time that my 40-yard dash that I ran last year in 6.1 seconds can be placed back to back. So in 12.2 seconds mm. of time. Now, in the hood, yes. the record that OG Cubone, <laughs> he did it in 20 seconds. Now, if you do this, I'm going to have to call Guinness, and you're going to be a new record-breaking 40-ounce guzzler. So it's OG Cubone I'm going for? OG Cubone. OG Cubone. OG Cubone. OG Cubone. OG Cubone. Yeah. 
Okay. Could there I be go. any whiter? So now, is there, I know, could I be a, so is there any advice that you would give him, Snoop? Uh, you know what it is, you, the, the, now this is not like running, it's not a, it's not a fast takeoff, it's the, the slow takeoff, and then just let it find its way, find its way, find it, then it's like a, 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 and then you in there. Now is he going out of the, out of the bottle, or is he pouring into a container? Oh no, this is bottle. Bottle, okay. This is hood, like. All right. Was it old E? Oh, eat a honey. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have them in the booth, Snoop. Eight honey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a couple minutes left here. Nick in Pittsburgh, PA. You've got a minute with Snoop here. Nick, you there? Oh, yes, I am. Snoop. Slick oh, Nick, what up, what's baby? Up? What's happening with you? What's happening with you, Snoop Dogg? Hey, listen, you raised me on your music, dog. You and Dre. Uh, Rich, you know, you've been raising me with the sports and all that. Thank you. But I want to go ahead and get to the question because... Uh, you got about a minute. Because I am a Bengals fan. I want to know what you feel about the beef between the Steelers and the Bengals, Snoop. I love it. It's great football. You know, I like the way it stays in between the lines. And, you know, it's, it's AFC North. We've been doing that for years. And um, I like it. I love it. It keeps us on edge. Well, you know, Burfecht says that he got the flag because he wears fifty foot. He wears fifty five, and the refs knew who he was. Well, no, he did something that requires a flag. That's what, <laughs> yeah, that, that was I'm my saying. point. That was my point. Well, right maybe there. he should be the Invisible Man, and then that way, they won't, hey, they didn't see me. That was my point. Because I man. hope, I hope he can bounce back. Well, just clean up his game. Because he's a great line. He sure is. He is. I mean, that play that he made, that it seemed like that you were going home on. Yeah. Yeah. That, that pick. Yeah, he did that. That Jeremy Hill then, you know, as we all know, gave back. It's just the discipline of it all. And to me, that starts with the head coach. The head coach has to have a little bit more discipline over his players to know, you know, how to discipline them. I mean, that's Marvin, though. I mean, right? Uh, you got to blame somebody. I hear you. That wouldn't happen on Tomlin's watch. Thank you for my fire 40 Adidas. Um, I hope I, I, no, I can... No, I know. Okay. I know. Thank you. Well, I, well, let's put it this way. I hope I make you proud, Snoop. No, I you're going to make proud. me proud. You already have. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for being part of all of this. Easy. Please come back. Like come Sunday back morning. certainly. Well, hey, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy like Sunday morning is yeah. the song as we go back out. Yeah. Uh, Snoop, <laughs> here on the Rich Eisen Show, Matthew Stafford of the Detroit Lions coming up next. We'll ask him the question about Megatron. If he's not there, you can have Snoopatron. Okay, I like it. <laughs> Hour three with Jeremy Sisto as well here in studio. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.